Kikoru went quite the length for Kafka. Hi guys, what's up? I'm back with Kaiju number 8 episode 11 review so let's dive into it. At first we see KG, the Defense Forces Deputy Director, discussing with other personnel how they should use Kafka's Kaiju DNA. Aisao, the Defense Forces Director General and Kikura's father, insists that the 3rd Division hand Kafka over to them. The officials then observe Kafka, who is currently imprisoned, from behind a glass. While imprisoned, Kafka recalls Kikura's words about the higher-ups using numbered kaiju parts as weapons. Mina, Ashina, and several troops arrive to collect Kafka and bring him to headquarters. Kafka sees his friends on the sidelines and wonders if it's truly the end for him. Just as expected, they want to take away Kafka and use him as a lab rat to conduct experiments on him. Also KG seems to be the type of person who is very stubborn and doesn't listen to others easily. Then we see that before Kafka enters the aircraft, Reno steps out of line and tells Kafka he believes he'll return to the defense force to fight by his side. As the aircraft closes, Kafka realizes he's alone with Mina. Mina assures Kafka there are no cameras in this area and shares her honest opinion about his actions during the Kaiju No. 10 incident. She tells Kafka she is gathering evidence to prove he is human, hoping to save him, and informs him that no one in the 3rd Division views him negatively. Mina then asks Kafka to sit in a specific area and informs him he'll be transferred to the Ariaki Maritime Base. Kafka asks if he can still stand by her side, and Mina says he can. Kafka is then contained at the Ariaki Maritime Base. Several days pass, and Iharu and the others reflect on Kafka's situation. Some want to save him, but another ally informs them that the Neutralization Bureau will decide Kafka's fate. Hashina and another ally discuss Kafka, with Hashina wanting Kafka back for a rematch. Mina lost many things due to Kaijus, so I expected her to show resentment towards Kafka, but she acted in a very mature way, and I really liked that. Also Hashina making everyone salute Kafka was really cool. Moving on we see Kikoru visits Aisao in his office and asks him not to eliminate Kafka. Aisao hands Kikoru a document containing Kafka's chest x-rays, revealing that Kafka is growing a core similar to other kaiju. Aisao argues that Kafka is a kaiju and reminds Kikoru that a kaiju killed her mother. Before leaving, Kikoru tells Aisao that she still believes in Kafka. While Kafka undergoes more physical exams, Reno and the others report to Mina. Mina informs them that they will be temporarily transferred to different divisions due to the significant damage at the Tachikawa base from the numbered kaiju rampage. She explains that higher-ups anticipate more attacks from other kaiju factions, so they will train the most talented rookies from all divisions. Mina assures them that this plan was in place before Kafka's kaiju number 8 identity was revealed. Reno complies, much to Ihara's shock. I never thought Kikoru would ask her father to help out Kafka, given the strained relationship between Kikoru and her father, but it shows how much Kafka has influenced her. Also Reno obeying the order, shows his strong faith in Kafka and Mina. Next we see Aoi meet Haruchi on a rooftop, telling him he was trying to connect with someone who could help Kafka. Aoi reminds Haruchi that he doesn't want to lose anyone, including Kafka. Afterwards, Aisao meets with Kafka and orders a worker to release him. Aisao shoots Kafka, grabs him, and collects Kafka's blood in a tube. He declares that Kafka will always be a kaiju in his eyes. Kafka stands up and asserts he's not a kaiju. Aisao equips himself with mechanical arms made from kaiju number no. 2's parts and battles Kafka. Kafka partially transforms into a kaiju. While they fight, Keiji shares intel with Kikoru about Kaiju No. 2, mentioning that it was a prideful beast whose body parts were turned into weapons after its defeat. I guess my impression about Aisao was wrong, because it looks like he really cares about Kikoru, and that's why he personally came to test Kafka. Also it was nice to see everyone trying to help Kafka in their own way. At the end we see Keiji say Aisao is the only one who can use those specific weapons. Before Aisao delivers the final blow, Kafka fully transforms and blocks Aisao's assault. 
However, Kikoru, Kafka, and the others realize something's off about Kafka, he's no longer in control of his body. The small kaiju that infected Kafka in episode 1 speaks to him, demanding he kill Aisau. Kikoru pleads with Kafka to prove his humanity to Aisau. Kafka then rushes toward Aisau. I'm guessing this will be another Naruto and Kurama thing, where the kaiju will constantly try to take control of Kafka's body throughout the series. Also I won't rant about it, but this whole part convoluted some things even more. Nonetheless, this was a decent build-up episode excluding some stuff. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.